our music study part three all I can say is that you need to go back into the audio and the videos to uh, see what we've discussed so far see what we learned we're not going to do a review because it's recorded I will say that we are li using the Liberty Bible course which at the end of the video I will give you information about how to get these books and I tell you get them they're wonderful uh, you need a King James Bible and I'm waiting for a sneeze to come out so I'm just, it's not going to come, it's going to come out when I'm at least expect it we should sing spiritual music part 3 Colossians 3 16 <coughs> there it is thank you excuse me Colossians 3 16 we've looked at hymns we've looked at um, Psalms we're going to look at spiritual music as we divide it into threes we've looked at background music of CDs and cassettes that's the last video we did Colossians 316 again we see that we should be singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs what are spiritual songs well we need to define what spiritual is Romans 8 6 there's a spirit and there's flesh spirit of God and flesh of the world in Romans 8 6 for to be carnally carnal carnival carnality fleshy worldly Minded is death. Is that good? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Well, which one do you want? You were given a choice right now. Do you want death or do you want life and peace? Yeah, but too many Christians out there choose the death by saying they want life and peace. You say, why is that? Because they want the carnality. They want to, you know, make the flesh feel good. They want to be entertained. See, we're going to study spiritual. And what the meaning is. And you're going to find it that today, everything but spirituality is in 99% of the churches. In the same chapter, Romans 8, we find in verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. I cannot be condemned. For I am a born again Bible believing Christian. I am washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am not going to hell. I am not going to purgatory. Which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Oh, wait a minute. You mean a Christian that is fleshy and worldly, there is condemnation? Let's read the verse again. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, comma, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I'm here to tell you that if you're a worldly Christian and you follow the flesh, you follow carnality, you follow the world and Satan in your worship of Christ, though you be saved, you will be condemned by the loss of rewards. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord is written to Christians. I know we use it for the lost, but doctrinally stating that verse is to you, the Christian. You die, Christian, because you still sin. And some of you enjoy it. Romans chapter 1. I know that's written to the world, but you read some of that list in there. Born again Christians are taking part in some of those wicked things. 
But if you walk after the Spirit, you will not be condemned. You will not suffer loss for soul winning. You will not suffer loss for reading your Bible. You will not suffer loss for prayer. You will not suffer loss for any forms of visitation door to door or the sick or the shut in. You will suffer loss for smoking, for drinking, for adultery, and any other sin. Now verse 5, chapter 8. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. It's all for the flesh. I can't give my tithes because I want to please my, my flesh. By using it for what I want to do. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Well, I'm going to give my time to go do something for the Lord and for, for lost people or saved people that I can do for myself. And we haven't even got into music yet. I'm talking about carnality. I'm talking about flesh and spirit as far as our nature, as far as our walk. I mean, listen. What would the Holy Spirit have you do, husband? Look at your wife and enjoy her or look at another woman and enjoy her? Which would you think the Holy Spirit and which will you think your flesh will approve of? And we haven't got the music yet. Spiritual is opposite of the flesh. Spiritual is counter flesh. Spiritual is not carnality. Spiritually is not worldly. Get there. Know it. There is a vast difference between spiritual and carnal. Flesh and spirit. As far as the east is from the west. Alright. Now, spiritual songs appeal to the spirit of a person. The inside of you. Not to the flesh. Well, what does that mean? When a, song, when a song or music wants you to blah, 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 and get your body going and be bopping and, and pleasing the flesh, that's fleshy. But when you've got a song where you can sit or lay down and think of heavenly, Think of peace. Think of comfort. Think of your Savior. Think of the Bible. That's spirit. This is the reason why good music is so hard to come by today. Because Christians are so carnal. So fleshy minded. Take a song and count the pronouns. I heard a, uh, a song the other day. 23 pronouns for man, and there was a Christ, and there was a God in it. That is flesh, carnal, anything but spirituality. When it's all about I, 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 me, 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 I, I, you sound like a baby three-year-old. Hold my hand, walk with me, I want to be with thee. I'm pants are wet, change me too. I love you, you love me. Sickening! And then you put a disgusting music behind it of electric guitars and of drums. Makes God sick! You find me somewhere in the Bible where it says, I like it. 
You won't. You make God sick. Bluegrass, contemporary music, and southern gospel music is sickening. Traditional hymns are what pleases God. Classical music please God. Listen, I've been in churches where they take that microphone and sexual invalidism about it. Get up there bebopping and all that. Oh, I can see Paul and Jesus doing that. I can see Jesus right after the Lord's Supper. Him, Peter, and Jesus. I've been in churches where I've listened to the music. And you know what? I've heard that music in a bar room. I've heard that music going to a teenage rock concert held at an a ice skating ring. Don't tell me I lived as a sinner for 18 years of my life. I've been in bar rooms. I've been in the rock and roll music. I was involved with all that wickedness. And your music imitates that junk. And if you don't like it, you get on your knees and get right with God right now. Because you will suffer a loss if you continue in that music because you like it or the people like it. Where the hell was that music? Now those that have, have didn't like that turned off, the rest of us can go about with a Bible study who love the Lord Jesus Christ. Most of all the Christian music being written today is geared to attract the flesh because that is what sells. You know a lot of those, those music that you listen to today, if you were to ask the writer, if you were to ask the performer, performer I said, if you were to ask the people in the band, I bet you 99% of them are not even safe and couldn't even find Matthew in the Bible. First Corinthians three one. There's a difference between flesh and spirit. You go back to the book of Psalms, you go back and study David and find out what musical instruments he used that the Holy Spirit wrote down for us to know. First Corinthians three one. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. The Corinthian church was a church that matches today. You, you want to find America in the Bible? There is. It's, it's C-O-R-I-N-T-H-I-A-N-S. T-I-V, whatever. Tis a V, that's what I was trying to say. Why couldn't Paul get spiritual matters with him? Why couldn't he talk spiritual? Because, because it says, I'll read the whole thing again, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Goo -goo -goo -goo. I've been saved for 40 years, and you're still carnal, if you listen to the wrong music. You are a 40-year-old man sitting in a wet diaper that needs your poopy changed. That's what Paul said. That's, I brought it up to date for you, okay? You can't even feed yourself. And the pastor of your church probably ain't feeding you milk and meat either because you're, you're still a babe. A baby in Christ is a carnal and not spiritual. You have not grown up. Now don't you dare go out there and a guy who first got saved and rip him and tear him in pieces because he's listening to the wrong music. Don't you dare do that. But when you got a Christian who's been saved 5, 6, 7, and all the way down to 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years, and still needs a bottle, 
That guy needs to be taken off the side, and he needs to be rebuked, and he needs to know the ways of the Bible. Because evidently he's not getting in the church. Evidently he's not reading his Bible. Flesh is not spirit. Spirituality is not carnality. 1 Peter 2.2 2. No matter what age you are, if you are a babe in Christ, you are retarded. And the music you listen to, if it's not spiritual music or spiritual songs, you are retarded in the field of music. 1 Peter 2.2 2. Reminds us that we are not to remain babies. Born again? You got to start your life over again. You got to take those steps again. You got to, you know, start off with the for with the breast milk, go to the formula, and then, you know, the, the food that's all mushed up, then a little solid milk, and then you got to work your way up. You got to learn how to read. You got to learn which books to read again. You got to learn how to talk and pray to God again. You got to start your whole life over. Desire the sincere work of the. Let me try to. Desire the sincere milk of the word. This King James Bible is breast milk. You are to attach yourself to this Bible every single day and get fed. Breast milk is filled with nutri nutrients. It's everything a baby needs to grow. You know why you haven't grown? I guarantee. Because you're not feeding yourself. Listen, it's normal for a baby. When Listen, I'm, I'm going to try to be clean. But it's normal for a baby when, when that thing is put before them. Oh. You ever watch a baby's mouth, an infant mouth, what it does when it gets something that's near to it? Listen, when you got this in your life, you'd be wanting to get into it. What would a, I don't know if anybody's ever tried to do it, but what if you took an infant and you gave him soda pop? Or alcohol? How quick would they reject it? I want. I don't know. I want that's an interesting study. Well, oh, how quick when a baby will latch on when it's milk. And Christian, have you latched on to the milk? Desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. You're not going to grow by reading the other junk out there. You're not going to grow by just reading the daily word. You're not going just to grow uh, with, with, uh, the, the, the magazine for the television program. You're not going to grow by the stuff you get at the newsstand or the magazine rack. You are only to grow as a Christian in the word of God. And if you're a newborn baby who's carnal, you have no business in commentaries. You have no business in reading anything else but the Bible. You ain't ready for that stuff. Now, I'll tell you another thing that there's a problem. I'm going way off on a bunny trail here, so you can grab your shotgun and shoot me if you want to. And if you don't like what I'm saying, take a number and get behind me. I'll tell you why a lot of people are, are carnal babies today, too, in the church. Because the pastor ain't helping them. He's too busy doing other things. He's too busy playing with balls out in the golf course. He's too busy, you know, trying to drum up, you know, with the other pastors. I got 5,000 people this week, did this, and I'm too busy, you know, you know, doing this. I'm too busy doing that. You know, if the, if the Bible believe in preaching, you better say amen to this. If he did what the Bible tells him to do, there would be no cemeteries out there to, to pervert these young men in the ministry. You say, what are you talking about? The preachers, the other Christians are to raise these, these children up and to bring them up in the Bible and to teach them the ways. Uh, that, that's a bunny trail, and I'm sorry, but I had to say that. 
So the, the milk of the word helps a child grow. And if you are 40 years saved and you're still carnal, you have not been in the book. Or the wrong book. Growth results, results not from entertainment, but exhortation from the Word of God. You can't not grow being in the Bible. I don't understand. It, it, I don't understand. If you are a carnal Christian, five to 50,000 years old in Christ, and be carnal, unless you're going through the Bible blindfolded. Or oh, there's a possibility. I read my three chapters. Okay, I'm done. Hey, look at that. It's on television. Church is very important to, to the growth of Christian. As seen in Ephesians chapter 4. Now, let me add another thing. I don't know when these There's no. I go to church. If your church is carnal, what do you think you're going to be? If your pastor doesn't have enough sense, are you going to? You gotta have the proper King James Bible believing traditional music church that teaches the sound doctrine. I see we ain't going far today. But Ephesians chapter four. Uh, you turn there. Let me see where we're gonna end up here. Listen, I've been in churches where they pull the slide down and you follow the bouncing ball. I've been in a church where the music is perfect and right. Oh, I wish I was back there. But the church went wrong. The pastor went wrong. I sat with a preacher one time. I, I swear to God, we went door knocking. Walked in there. I watched it. I was newly saved. This is 1987. The preacher put his Bible down on the TV, the guy's house, and we sat and listened to Bob Dylan. And this same preacher went over to a family members members of my house and would listen. I don't even remember what the rock band is, and I don't even need to give it a name. You know what that church is today? It's disgustingly sick. You go by that church right now, you see, it look like a biker's bar. Matter of fact, one of the emblems they have looks like a biker's patch and all that. King James, Bible-believing, independent, fundamentalist church. Oh, so you're really going on bunny trails today. Yeah. I've been to church with contemporary music. I even heard the pastor of that church say, hey, this is just a great beat, and didn't even stop it. But everybody joked and everybody laughed about it. And then we sang, and there was in the song book, by jo a song with Johnny Cash. Then in the hymn, you know, the three wise men came. And it's like, excuse me, uh, music director? Yes, Sally. It wasn't three wise men. Well, that doesn't matter. And we go on singing in the, in the shepherd's camp. See, uh, music director, what is it, Sally? The shepherd and the wise men didn't come at the same time. Well, it's this just a song. No, Sally, no more. It's a lie. And your music may be a lie. I won't, uh, let me get back to this. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. I love you. I want you to see you do right. I want to see you get rewarded the judgment seat of Christ and realize this is an important thing. Listen, I've had my head chopped off so many times I feel like a chicken running around. But I'm not a chicken. I'm bold to speak up. The preachers that won't do this are the chickens. Head off by Colonel Sanders. God gave apostles. There's no more for today. There are no apostles today. It's not a study, but 
prophet. If you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to burn in hell. I'm a prophet. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and go to New Jerusalem. I'm a prophet. Evangelist. From what I've seen, I really don't want that office. Pastors. I hope the Lord opens that one up for me. And some of you guys out there, you, yeah, right. I wouldn't let him in my church. I wouldn't want to be in your church if you don't want me in your church. If you don't want the doctrine. If you don't want the truth. Teachers. I'm a great teacher. I'm teaching you right now. For the perfecting. Perfect. Perfect. You want to be a perfect Christian? For the perfecting of the saints, live people, not dead. Only one church teaches their saints are dead and in hell. I mean, yeah, dead and in hell. In the Bible, saints are alive. You want perfection? You listen to this, 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 this video and say, you know what? I want to listen to right music. I want to do right. Get in your Bible. Get under a pastor. Get under teachers. Get under prophets. Get under evangelism, evangelism, and you will, if you had a King James Bible, a proper church, you will be on the road to perfection. What is perfection? When you're in New Jerusalem, and when those 24 elders throw down their crowns, and when those uh, the beasts shout, Holy, 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 you better reach off your head and grab a crown, and throw it at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's perfection. I don't care if it's just one crown. If you can throw one crown at the Lord Jesus Christ in honor and glory, that's perfection. Imagine those who won't have any crowns. And they sit up there in heaven and they're looking for the ones that sang the music they like. And they're like, where are they? You saw them in Revelation 20 get cast in the lake of fire. I told you, 99% of them are probably lost. Verse 13, unity of the faith, together, faith. Imagine this, this uh, no, that's an old story. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. What do you know about Jesus? Well, he's got a white face and little dark little hair comes down. He's got, always got a little smile. Liar! You don't know nothing about Jesus Christ if you're looking at a picture and think he's American. Well, Jesus was black. Liar! Jesus is my homeboy. Liar! Well, that just cut into little Jesus. Liar! Revelation 19, he has to cut into a little lion coming to, to, to cast his wrath. What do you know about Jesus? Were there three wise men that. Liar! His mother was a queen. Liar! God, cleanliness is next to God. Liar! What do you know about Jesus? He just loves it. Liar! How can you listen to music and you know you know about the Son of God? And you're going to sing something. They don't, they don't even sing songs. There's modern music about it. It's all about me, myself, and I. The point of verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Suffer little children, come unto me. Yeah, but you got to grow up, child. A child does not grow up as a retard, and I'm not speaking about those who physically have a defect. I'm talking about you, Christian, who don't get in the Bible, don't praise, not in the proper church, don't listen to the proper music, and you're as carnal as anything can be.
Let me tell you about carnality. I don't think we're going to finish this study today. I'll tell you about carnality. There is this born again Bible believing Christian in a bar one night and a massive fight broke out. And in the end, that this Christian was killed in the bar room. And as the police are doing their business, the animal's taking people out, and then, you know, the news reporters all around. Satan comes walking through the front door, and this is not a true story, but it's great for the illustration. He looks down at that body, and he, and he snatches the soul. Starts walking out the door, heading down to hell. Boom, one of the angels pull him up. Again, this is not a true story, but illustration. Walks up to Satan and says, the Lord rebuked thee, Satan. Get out of my way. I got, I got to go to hell. I got things to do tonight. No. The Lord rebuke you. Give me that soul. Now listen to me. I ain't got the time for this. I'm taking this soul to hell. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. That is God's soul. No. It's my soul. Get out of my face. All right? Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Open your hand and look. Satan's all fed up. He says, okay. Oh. That is God's soul. It's washed with the blood. I'm sorry. I thought he was mine. He was with my people. Now, that's not a true story. But, oh, does it have truth? Verse 15. Further states, Grow up! I'm going to stop right there. You read the rest of the verse yourself. Grow up! You need to grow up with your music if it's not right. Ephesians 4 is not being fulfilled in the lives of many Christians today. They are not growing up. They are still babies in Christ and enjoy the things they do. Baby things. It don't bother that they sit in a wet, pooky diaper. The question was asked back on page 3 as how we can go about getting back to the right standard in church music. We talked about that last week. That the question has already been answered. Strong preaching out of the King James Bible, which exhorts the listeners. And I gave you an illustration just a few minutes ago. Now, you thought I was rude, crude, and mean, and whatever other words come out of your filthy mouth. Second part of the answer is that people must apply that preaching personally. See, it's not good if, hey, I listen to a great preacher, I listen to a good Bible sound preacher, and he's King James, he's right all the way. But if you don't be doers of the word and not hearers only, you deceive yourself. Okay, so we should be careful what music is allowed to be sung in a church. But I can listen to other types of music on my own. All right, the church music is sound, but... The, the tape deck in my car, the CD player in the house. James 1.22, now look at this. Shows you, I, listen, I quoted this verse. I didn't even look down at the page. I know some of you are not going to believe it, but I'll swear to a Bible. James 1.22, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. If you do not obey the word personally, then you are deceiving yourself. And you say, what do you mean personally? In your own private life when no one else is looking at, looking at you. That includes what you watch on the, on the monitor, what you watch in the, in the video, well, at the movie theater, or whatever your eyes and ears, or even maybe your mouth. Ephesians 5.19 is exactly as Colossians 3.16. Almost. And there is a difference. It says, speaking to yourselves. 
and psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Colossians 3 puts a personal level for you, not just the church house. In your private personal life. So don't owe the church and you don't do what you do in your personal life. Those headphones. The proper type of music is to be played in church is also the proper type of music that should be listened in your private life. The Christian is not to live a split personality. I do it right at church, but in my own personal life, I do whatever I want to do. The truth is this, what you listen to in private, you will evidently bring into the church. Oh, I know that's true. Page eight, he gets into what a church is. We're going to, I'm going to overlook that. I'm going to get back into the music. You go back to page eight and you get the booklet and study it along. According to Colossians 3.16, is rock music acceptable in the worship service? Going to church. Is rock music psalms, hymns, or spiritual songs? No. It does not qualify for any, if not all, three of those characteristics. Psalms, I mean, excuse me, Ephesians 5.19 says, neither should you be listening to it by yourself. Well, we do the right music at church, but at home you listen to rock music. How about this? You go to church, you listen to the right music, you listen to the right music in your car, and you listen to the right music in your CD. What are your children playing in their room? Father. Is it okay for you to have the right music in the church, the right music in the car, the right music in your living room, and your children are listening to the music of the world and the devil? Is that correct? According to Colossians 3.16, is country and western music acceptable in worship service? Oh, I got me a Budweiser in a pickup truck and getting a woman that's not my wife. Yeehaw, she ran off with a bolt man, and now I sing this country song. Is it? But I like it. Is country music a song, a hymn, or a spiritual song? No. And according to Ephesians 5.19, you are not to be listening to it by yourself, alone. Colossians 3.16 Is classical music acceptable in worship service? Is it a psalm, a hymn, or a spiritual song? And we're going to study this later. No. According to Ephesians 5.19 You are not to listen to it by yourself. But we'll get into it later. You say, Honda's Messiah. I didn't say. Honda's Messiah is a hymn or a spiritual song. It's out of scriptures. I say classical music. What about that? There's some classical music out there. It's just absolutely filthy and sick. According to Colossians 3.16, jazz. Blues, rap, easy listening, pop music, and can I add Southern Gospel? I added that. You know what jazz means? Have you looked in the dictionary and found out what J-A-Z-Z -Z means? Have you ever looked it up in the dictionary? I'm going to trust you to do it yourself. I'm not going to do it for you. Okay? That's a homework assignment for you, little boy. You're in kindergarten or you're in a grade school trying to grow up in the Lord. I'll give you this assignment. Look up jazz and find out what it means. 
Is it psalms, hymns, or spiritual song? Say, Brother Stahl, you're, you're picking on me. No, just a worldly Christian. If you really love the Lord and do right, you're entertained by this, this video. You're probably laughing, having a good old time, and saying, Amen, glory to God. i got to keep going. No. So according to Ephesians 5.19, we are not to be listening to it ourselves. And there are rap music about Jesus and all. No, you don't. Your true spirituality is what you are by yourself when no one else is around. But my pastor, you know, he's got the church doing it. What is he in his private life? Uh huh. Proverbs 15 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. You're not fooling nobody by doing it in private. God sees what you're doing, even though no one else does. Check out Psalms 139, verse 12. In Jeremiah 17, 10, it says, God searches our hearts. Now, you may be out there, and you're listening to this rotten music. And you're a babe in Christ. You are truly a babe in Christ. And you know what? You want to grow. And you're saying to yourself, well, guess what? I want to do right. I need prayer. You email me and I'll put you in my prayer list. Now, if you're a new if you are saved, newborn believer in Christ, I wasn't screeching and preaching at you. I'll take you on the wing, I'll pray for you, and I'll help you get out of this mess. It's a mess. If you're 20, 30 years old in Christ and you're still involved in this mess, you email me. You need prayer. You need to get out of this mess. If you're 20, 30, 40, 50 years old in Christ, and you've heard this message and say, you know what? You're full of it. I'm going to listen to what I want to listen to, and I don't care what you say, and you know, you're preaching is a bunch of idioticy, and you know, you're just full of the devil. And you're going to stand before Jesus Christ. And you're going to lose rewards. Or you may stand before Jesus Christ and Christ, well, you probably don't even know what I'm saying, but they say, depart from me. I never knew you. Because this music, this carnality music is borderline. If a person's saved or not. Because this music is of Satan in the world. And if you truly love the Lord Jesus Christ, you would not do what does not please him. And we're going to end this study here. And I went off on many trails and I went off. But listen, the Lord led me to do it. I've been through this avenue. I know what I'm talking about. This is a deadly ground here that... Who do you hear about in the churches where the pastors run off with? Most cases, it's a piano player. You are in the realm of Satan when it comes to music because he was the first music director, and I don't have time for that. Satan has infiltrated churches today with what we're talking about. Improper, fleshy, carnal music and we mentioned music titles here rap blues and all that and they just put the name christian attached to it and it, they think it's okay it's not a sin is a sin to him that knows to do it to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin james says so we've got to end there for time get the other videos and join us next week lord willing as we continue where we left off. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the 
blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be freed from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood.